Hello and welcome to our tutorial series, Preparing to File Forms 1099. My name is Jim Wyatt and in our first video, Getting Started, we reviewed the three focus areas that need to be reported on Forms 1099. One, the vendor type, two, the payment method, and three, the payment type. In this video, I'm going to guide you through the steps of setting up QuickBooks Desktop to streamline the production of your 1099s. If you use the QuickBooks Online version instead of the desktop version, you'll want to watch our video for QuickBooks Online, and you can find a link to that video in the description below. Okay, let's get started. This is the 2021 version of QuickBooks Desktop Pro. One of the things that you want to do is that throughout the year is to maintain your vendor information. Go up to the vendor in the toolbar across the top, go to the vendor center, pick the vendor that you want to keep updated properly, and on the third tab, tax settings, you'll see where you can enter the vendor tax ID, which is the federal EIN, and if they are eligible for 1099s, you need to check the box vendor eligible for 1099. Save your work and keep this maintained throughout the year. Then, in order to start the process of doing your 1099s, you're gonna to want to return to the vendor section again and drop down to where it says 1099 forms, print and e-file 1099 forms. Before you can prepare and file your 1099 miscellaneous and your form 1099 NEC, the program is going to ask you to run a backup. You don't see it on this window because that backup has already been made. Make a backup to the drive that you want to keep it on, and then the next box that opens up will be what you see on your screen right now. QuickBooks Desktop can only prepare and map one type of 1099 form at a time. You'll be given a choice on the next page as to whether you want to run 1099 miscellaneous or 1099 NEC. Don't be alarmed by this warning. Just be aware that you'll need to complete the entire process for one type of 1099 before proceeding to the next. The question is, do you want to print, e-file your 1099 forms? The answer is yes. This window opens and explains the filing dates for the two different types of 1099s and asks you which one you'd like to start first. We recommend that you start with the Form 1099 NEC. It has an earlier filing date than the miscellaneous. And usually your information for the 1099C is already complete by the end of the year or closely thereafter. Some of the information for a 1099 miscellaneous may not be complete till a little bit later and you don't wanna miss your deadlines in filing the 1099 NEC. So let's get started with those first. On the top and the right shows your progress through the process of formatting your QuickBooks to produce the 1099s. You're on the first step here, and it is to select vendors. It is going to give you a list of the vendors that you marked as 1099 eligible earlier in the process. You can see in this sample, there's only a few that have been marked. Typically, you'll have several pages of vendors that are eligible for 1099s. They may be 
vendors that you didn't use in the year that you're publishing the 1099s for. And so you can unclick those. It, is, it isn't really that important because if you didn't use them during the year that you're producing the 1099s for, they're not going to come up on the report. There's not going to be a 1099 issued under their name anyway. But if you would like to maintain the information in its most succinct form, review this list and uncheck any vendors that you know you didn't use during that year. When you've completed that, hit the continue button and go to step two. This time it's verifying vendors. And for the, in, the vendors that you chose in the previous step, it's going to show you information that you have already input into QuickBooks and have available to print your 1099s. Every vendor that has a 1099 needs a tax ID number. So if a tax ID number is not showing up in this stage of the processing, then you know that you're going to have to contact that vendor as explained in the earlier tutorial and ask them to complete a W-9. The company name needs to be exactly as the W-9 indicated. If it's an individual, the tax ID number will be their social security number. Please make sure that their legal name is what you've input into QuickBooks. The phone number is not imperative and the state and payer state number in Oregon, the BIN number, is not required when filing 1099s. So if you don't have an input for these vendors, it is not a step that you need to, to complete. You can move forward. The next step is to map the accounts, your general ledger accounts that are found in your chart of accounts, as to where the they are reported on the 1099 that you're working on. There are a number of choices for each type of 1099 and they're specific. So these choices here for this general ledger account are specific to the 1099 NEC and are not the miscellaneous because that's not the form that we started to process. There is a choice to omit this payment from a 1099. We've discussed which types of payments are eligible for an NEC. And there are expenses that you have paid that are not eligible, such as rent. Rent appears on the 1099 miscellaneous. So if you were looking at rent as an expense account in this list, you would be sure to click omit these payments from 1099 NECs. Most of your NEC payments are going to be recorded under box one, non-employee compensation. The other two boxes that you will map on occasion are federal tax withheld. Those are for vendors that didn't supply you with a EIN and so you withheld a portion of your payments to forward on to the government. This happens very seldom. Box five is state tax withheld. And again, this is under special circumstances that you should refer to the 1099 regulations for your specific state to see when you might need this box. Up at the top here, there is a field that says show 1099 accounts. These are the accounts that you mapped previously in a previous year. It is only those accounts that are eligible according to previous mapping. It is recommended that you use the drop down and you choose show all accounts. It is likely that during the year you may have added expense accounts. It's also possible that you may have started some capital improvement projects and you need to make sure that some of your fixed asset accounts are also listed here 
and not just your expenses. When you start the mapping, it always says omit these payments from 1099. The majority of your accounts won't be reported on the 1099 NEC, and so this is the proper choice. If you mistakenly come down and mark this box that says report all payments in box one, what will happen is all of these choices will be converted to report in box one. Then you'll have to go through and move them back to omit, such as these income accounts and most likely your fixed asset accounts. So please don't check this box on the lower left. It appears to be a shortcut, but in fact, it's going to add quite a bit of time. Once you've mapped your general ledger accounts to the proper box in the NEC, then you're gonna to want to come down and hit the continue button. This is a good time to point out that if during this process, you need to break away and come back at a later time, you can choose to save and close, and it will save the work that you've performed already. You'll reopen it and move through to the next step that you hadn't worked on yet. This next window, the fourth step, is to show you what payments are included and which payments are excluded. If you recall, if a payment is made using a debit card or a credit card, you don't include it in the total of the monies that you're going to report. The company that processes debit card charges and credit card charges will issue a 1099-K to the recipient of those payments. You are not responsible for them and you do not want to over-report them. Let's use this sample company and look at the included payments. On this report, you can see that Salt Advertising was written a check. There's the check number, excuse me, this is the bill number but it is recording the payment that was made. And you'll see it was for $120 for advertising. I entered another SALT advertising transaction that was paid with a debit card so that we could look at an example. It's under excluded payments. You can see where under the check number, I typed in debit and it was for $601. I wrote it for that amount to be sure that it was over the limit and would usually be included on the 1099 except for the payment method was a debit card. The word debit was typed into the number field for the check. Additionally, you could use DBT, an abbreviation for debit. However, if you use EFT for electronic fund transfer, some people do this on debit card transactions, it will be included. ACHs are included and EFT notation designates that the payment was made in the form of an ACH and not in the form of using a debit card. So be very specific. When you make payments with a debit card, enter the word debit. QuickBooks will read it as an excluded payment and will make sure not to report it on the 1099. The next step is confirming entries. Here again, what will happen is the vendor will be listed with the legal name that will appear on the 1099, the tax ID number, and it has calculated for you the total included on 1099s and the total unmapped payments. So patio and desk designs does not have funds sufficient 
in eligible payments for 1099s to produce a 1099. Salt advertising doesn't either because the included transactions didn't total more than $600. There were payments made to these two vendors totaling what is in the column total unmapped payments. That means that these type of payments you did not indicate should be mapped to a 1099 NEC. You can open up a report that shows you the amount by double clicking. And if it was advertising and a product was created in the advertising, artwork was done that you own, then you do need to pay them or report them on a 1099. Um, and if their services totaled more than $600, you need to be sure that you mapped advertising to 1099 NEC also. The last step in QuickBooks is to choose the manner for filing. You can purchase 1099 NEC forms and print directly from the reports in QuickBooks. You cannot download the forms from the web, and nor can you copy previous forms or forms that you have purchased in order to increase your supply. The reason is, is there a special red ink utilized in the printing of these 1099s that cannot be replicated in a copy machine or a printer? you need to purchase them from a printing company. You can arrange for that purchase directly through QuickBooks, or you can buy them at an office supply store. There are a number of other web resources where you can order these forms. The other choice within QuickBooks is that you can e-file your 1099s, and if you choose this, it will explain the cost associated, and it's good to check it each year because the cost does change. Also be aware of two other items. One is that if you choose to e-file directly through QuickBooks, they cannot e-file with the state of Oregon. Most states have a reciprocal agreement where if you file a 1099 with the IRS, the IRS sends the information to the state and you don't need to file with that state. However, Oregon is unusual. You must electronically file your 1099s with Oregon using what's called Oregon iWire. We're going to cover this in our last um, tutorial which is called uh, pr uh, processing and printing your 1099s. If you choose to use this electronic system through QuickBooks, you also most likely will need to complete them several days in advance in order to give QuickBooks the time to process them. This, will be, this information will be present when you decide to utilize their e-filing. They will also produce a paper copy and mail it to your vendor, which you are required to do. So you can consider this service or you can also explore other electronic services by looking at the web. There are a number of them um, that are well known and you'll see them on the web and it will explain the process that you need to undergo. One last thing is after you've completed the process of setting up QuickBooks, is that now you can go back to the vendor menu across the top, go to 1099 forms, and you can produce summary reports, detail reports, you could also order your forms here, and you can do a review of your 1099 vendors. This report is all of your vendors 
it states whether they are eligible for the 1099s or not, you may have marked them ineligible at an earlier time and decided that they are actually eligible now. You can double click, it will take you back to the tax setting window and you can revise it. Also, this report, if it says they are eligible, then there should be a tax ID number that you have entered. You can see the tax IDs that you are missing. After you have gone through the process set up, it's also a good idea to look at the 1099 detail report, which in this example, unfortunately, doesn't have any transactions that were eligible, but if there were some, they would be listed individually with the total indicated. You could look at those transactions and see if perhaps maybe there are transactions that were credit card transactions or debit card transactions that should have been noted as such and they should be removed from your report. That wraps up our walkthrough of setting up QuickBooks Desktop for streamlined processing of Forms 1099 Miscellaneous and Forms 1099 NEC. Thanks for watching.